Good evening, everyone. How are all of you doing? I hope uh, you're all in good cheer and good health in a good place, wherever you are. It's been quite the year, hasn't it? We've all experienced our share of worry and anxiety. And we've all come to terms with the collective circumstances and have learned to adapt to our personal circumstances. We've all transferred this journey of this very difficult time. And we've been able to do that because we've all kept an open mind. An open mind, it helps you acknowledge the situation. An open mind helps you come to terms with the situation. An open mind, it helps you adapt to the situation. And most importantly, an open mind helps you re-emerge stronger from the situation. All of us have done that. And you know what? I'd like to begin this evening by just putting our hands together for all of us. We've made it with an open mind. What do you say? Wherever you are. All of you out there, our esteemed patrons, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time out and joining us this evening. I'm Geetika Ganjudhar, your moderator for this session, and I'm delighted as I welcome you all to Open Mind and Knowledge Series. Now this evening, I'm going to be talking to two guests, two awesome humans, and I'm going to be learning from their wonderful journeys, some wonderful things. This series that we're setting forth on now today, in this series, we're going to attempt to look at life and its myriad facets with an open mind. And we're going to see how all of us as individuals, as organizations, as communities, as organizations, as communities, as nations, as a world, have together surmounted one social challenge after the other. Let's get talking. Let's get cracking. I'd like to introduce our guests to you in alphabetical order. Okay, the guest I'm going to first introduce to you is phenomenal. Huh? Now, BBC has listed her amongst the world's most influential women. Uh, she's been listed at number six in the Forbes list of power women. She's received the World Peace Award. She's been honored with the Indian Nari Shakti Award, the highest civilian honor in India. For 25 years of her prime life, she's uh, her trained 20,000 commandos across different forces. And she's done so without monetary compensation and despite bankruptcy, has refused sponsorships, grants, and charity and loans. She's someone who spent the prime of her life in high altitudes, freezing ones, in scorching deserts, in dense forest jungles, and tense LOC borders. She's done it all. She's fractured every single born in her body. She chose to not have her own child, but to adopt one from this beautiful world. She studied immunology from the Harvard Medical School. She studied leadership from Westminster Business School. And she's also been declared runner-up in the Mrs. World Beauty pageant. She's a woman who has played the traditionally so-called male game and has excelled at it. She's truly a wonder woman. I'm so honored as I welcome Dr. Seema Rao. Good evening to all of you. Good, e good evening, Gitika. Dr. Seema Rao, I am very happy that I'm going to be talking to you this evening because for me, this is going to be an experience full of learning. Very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Let me tell you one thing. Learning is for both of us. I learn from you, you learn from me. So there's always somebody we can learn from. And that's what makes you who you are, the spirit that you have. <laughs> okay, let's get on our uh, next guest, Dr. Rao. Now my next guest, huh? she is like a seasoned management professional who comes armed with diverse experience from different industries, 
banking, automobile, and real estate. Wow. She spent uh, two decades in the banking and financial services industry. And uh, she's someone who's uh, recently switched uh, roles uh, from senior vice president at a bank to taking on coaching as a full-time profession. Now, why this happened was because very early in her career, she realized that she had this uh, genuine passion for training and nurturing young leaders. And she realized very uh, early in her journey that uh, people were companies and organizations most important resource. She's an alumni of the Indian Institute of Management Cozy Code and she serves on their board of uh, governors. She is a passionate advocate of gender equality at work and in life. She is an organizational development coach, a life coach, a heal your life licensed workshop leader. I'm so happy as I welcome in our midst Sridhari Raghavan. CEO, founder, director of Tatva Masi. Sidevi, welcome to you. Good evening. Thank you so much, Geetika, for that wonderful introduction. I'm so glad to be sharing space with someone as versatile as you. And uh, Dr. Seema Rao, what a privilege and honor to be, to be here with you on this lovely evening. I'm looking forward to talking to you too, Sridevi. Absolutely. Let's have um, a wonderful conversation with all our esteemed patrons listening in and then at the end of our conversation, of course, they will have lots of questions that they may want to ask us and I request you both to take those questions too. My first question to both of you, and very predictable one, but I'm still go, going to go ahead and ask you that. Is there something both of you can't do? <laughs> uh, well, there's many things that I can't do. And uh, I think uh, for everybody, there's something that they cannot do. But uh, I'll also say one thing that as women, there's a lot we do. <laughs> so that's my answer. Okay, Jira, there's this that I can't do. I can't not be happy and I can't not, uh, not be in love. So I have to constantly be happy and I have to constantly be in love. <laughs> How wonderful is that? <laughs> Before I start asking you... Uh, a long list of questions that I have for you because this, I'm just very eager to you know talk to you this evening. I'm uh, going to, uh, in your honor, say these few lines. Should I do that? Won't yes. embarrass you? Okay. <laughs> Komal hai, kamzor nahi ko. Shakti ka naam hinari hai. Jab ko jeevan dene wali, maut bhi tut se hari hai. In your honor, ladies. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, in honor <laughs> of all the women today. Yes, we said that together. Thank you. All, all of us women, all of us humans. So as I said, we we're talking to two awesome humans this evening, and I'm going to be learning some wonderful things from their wonderful journeys. Here we go. Dr. Seema Rao, for 20 years, you worked in what is a traditionally male-dominated zone. Yeah? At every bend, at every break, with every wear, with every tear, what kept you going? What was the inspiration behind this journey that you took for 20 years? How did you do it? You know, to start with, uh, let me say that my inspiration was my father because he was a freedom fighter. So as a freedom fighter, you know, he was uh, you know, working for the country uh, for, to, to free India. So I think that's what influenced me. And I thought that, you know, I should do some work for the country. I should serve the country. So it all started from there, yeah. Uh, but apart from that, I think it was destiny that, uh, you know, uh, made me uh, train commandos. It was a tryst, you know, though I was physically weak, I met my husband who, you know, uh, taught me how to be physically strong and to get fit. Apart from that, I think it was a tryst of destiny that uh, I learned how to fire with an AK-47. Uh, again, it was a tryst of destiny that, uh, you know, I came across these instructors who were part of an army setup and then that's where the journey started so um, i think it was uh, it was just uh, a twist it was just destiny but you know talking about uh, the tears etc yes i have been uh, through a lot of injuries in the past 20 years because my profession is something like that uh, i'd like to narrate a small story uh, you know about that um, i was at a forces location and I was doing what you call a monkey rope across two buildings at the height of about 40 feet. Now, monkey rope is where you hold the rope 
and you have your leg around the rope to traverse from one side to the other so that is what i was doing before the training uh, before the trainings so um, as i was doing that for some reason the rope snapped and down i came and as i came down i back hit the uh, wall of the building and i heard a crack in my back thankfully i didn't leave the rope because i you know you wouldn't be seeing me here today so i held on tightly to the rope knowing that it's my dear life i'm holding on to and eventually there were uh, people who came rescued me i was hospitalized and uh, at that time i remember uh, during those grueling about 6 months that i was uh, you know on the hospital bed looking at the ceiling i asked myself is this something i want to continue doing and uh, because you know what happens is you know all of us the need for survival is there in every human being yes. so when something injures you badly or uh, you know questions your survival it's obvious that you would think of that so i contemplated a lot but i realized that you know i had been in this uh, you know field for a long time and i did not want to give up just because of one thing the going wrong i didn't want to look at myself in the mirror and say you know something you're yellow you're scared that's why you gave up so um, i realized that i have to be cautiously bold but still continue walking on the path wow you know i was yesterday uh, telling uh, my family at home that this is a lady who's fractured every bone in her body but she's carried on one year after the other after the other on on the same path kudos to you yeah you know you know kitika i think all of us women we have so many obstacles that we constantly face we don't talk about those obstacles necessarily but we still handle them so wonderfully so that's really that's why women are strong you know basically within there's a lot of latent strength in all of us just have to realize that that's all yeah. yes yes the game is to realize it the latent strength within each one of us uh sridevi yes. aapko Yeah, you know less you chose sales and service in the banking industry like when how many years back at a time when it was uh, it was like a judgment that this is a traditionally male dominated uh, zone you chose to do it. you must have had mountains that you surmounted sri devi yeah so i have a very funny story to tell you geetika uh, and that is uh, I lasted in my first job for twenty four hours. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So so it goes on like this that I actually came to Chennai in search of a job, and uh, you know I was asking around uh, with friends, and then they told me that there is a job available at a direct sales agency of Standard Chartered Bank. So I was here. I was very excited that I'm getting a job with Standard Chartered Bank, and I went and joined them. so they told me that i had to sell credit cards you know it's the normal skill that we do with anyone who's uh, joining a bank or a direct selling agency of the bank there was this wonderful uh, uh, gentleman who actually took me around on his bike the whole day he took me to offices he took me to homes uh, i was watching him and then by the end of the day i think i had even managed to sell one and a half cars okay so i was all excited i came back home and those days i had to stay with my aunt because i had nobody else to stay with in chennai I came home very excited, and I told her what I did for the day, and she threw a fit. She said, "Women from respectable families will not do this kind of job. Nothing doing. I will hear nothing of this. You are going to leave this job." I mean, I really didn't know what to do because I had a lot of hopes, uh, you know, of of working at that point in time. Uh, she was she she just put her foot down and she said no you're not going to so I had to give in to her i had to give in to her simply because i had no place to go at that point in time so that was it i i gave up on that job and i found another job so it was not bad scene but i knew that in everything else that i did uh, there was something in me that kept saying i enjoyed that first day at work it took me a marriage it took me a pushy husband it took me an insistent boss who after seven and a half years pushed me back into sales my graph which was very nice you know which was more flowing very smoothly until then suddenly spiked now 
Geetika, I'm not here to tell you that uh, sales is the best career for a woman. But what I'm here to say is when you find your passion and you know exactly what Dr. Seema Rao just said when she lay down in the hospital and she asked herself, would she want to do this again? When you really find your calling and you go back to your calling is where life happens. And life happened to me after I went back to my sales career. I know this question comes a lot and I know there are a lot of apprehensions exactly the way you asked, you know, whether it is a male dominated uh, career or not, whether it is a male dominated uh, field or not. And let me tell you this, uh, when does one become an effective salesperson? Okay. A, you need to have uh, a tremendous amount of brand loyalty. You have to be very, very loyal to the organization that you're working for. Two, you have to be very convinced about the product that you're trying to sell. And three, you must keep the best interests of your customer in mind. Now, compassion, passion, empathy. According to me, this is, all this emanates from the feminine energy. So, you know, so this just proves that a woman can do this job as well as anybody else can. So that's my story on how I came back to sales. And now I am actually a sales process coach in my uh, in my field of work that I do in organizational development, I actually uh, work with organizations to look into the sales processes. You know, what I'm getting from the answers that both of you gave me right now is that both of you had open mind. Yeah. And that's why both of you were able to challenge conventions, rewrite rules and break down barriers. That is why, because you had open minds. Dr. Now, I'd like to ask you, you essentially trained for 25 years prime years of your life, 20,000 commandos across different forces. Now, here you are, a woman in a traditionally male-dominated field training commandos across various forces. You were doing it right. What was their reaction? Any instances that you have, any memories that come back that you'd like to share with us? You know what I'm asking you. Yeah, of course. Um, why do women think that it's going to be difficult for men to accept them. It's really not like that. See, mine is a physical field. Okay. Physical. So, yeah. So, I had to keep my skills honed up. You know, I had to be fit. So, I lead by personal example. So, whenever I go to a forces location, if there's any task to be done, I would do it first and then the others would follow so, you know, I think if people, if men are convinced about a woman's capabilities, they yes. really don't doubt them. They yes. take to their leadership. So this is some, uh, this is a notion, uh, you know, which, which needs to be struck off. That why would a man uh, not take well to a woman leader? So uh, I really had no problems because as, as long as I would prove my capabilities, they would take to me. You know, there would be these times when I would go to courses, locations, I would uh, spend many days uh, training them. And at the end of it, or when it's time to say goodbye, I would see them, some would walk up to me, they would salute, they would shake hands with me. And I would see their eyes uh, welled up with tears. And you know, that look is something that I will never forget because that is true respect and admiration that I had won. And uh, that will stay close to my heart. You know, Dr. Now, I always say this to everyone in my profession too. I'm a media professional from India's media and entertainment industry. And we also have our barriers that we face as women on stage in front of the camera. And I always say this, that uh, talent is like water. And in your case, capability mm -hmm. is like water. It always finds a way. Yeah. They respected you because uh, you were good at what you were doing. And they had no option but to respect you. And that's what happened. I think such a wonderful, wonderful instance you are of someone who just went out there and did her job, irrespective of her gender. And that's what's so good at it. Uh, Sri Devi. And you know one thing, Kitika, if I, I may cut you. You know, it is kind of uh, natural for uh, men to wonder whether a woman can excel in those areas. I'm talking of the, my field. So, uh, but, but you know, that comes with it. But as soon as they were convinced of what I can do, uh, you know, I had bridged the gap. Yes, that was it. You, you bridged the gap and you sealed the bond. Yeah, absolutely. Both.
Sri Devi, you have spent so many years in a zone that is firstly considered traditionally male dominated, and secondly is cutthroat. It's fast paced. How did you mentally prepare and then cope through all these years? Okay, uh, so Gitika, I'm going to say something which is very cliched, but it is very true, and uh, and that is pick your battles. You know, the maximum amount of battles are all fought in your head than it has ever been fought in the real world. True, uh, and I keep reminding myself about this. I tend to use a lot of analogies with myself when I have to convince myself about something. I tend to drive a lot, uh, and I mean drive, drive, uh, not driving people crazy. Uh, <laughs> So when I drive around a lot, I ask myself that if I was to face a pothole on the road, would I get into it or would I just go around it? The answer is very simple. Then why is it that I think I have to placate everyone who comes in my way? Now, if I have the goal set in my mind, then I think I should just go on picking up a battle which will help me go forward. You know, when I explain this to my clients and Sometimes uh, my life coach clients, you know, they, they, they want to reason it out a little more. So I tell them this, I tell them that you must believe, and this is something that you must believe, that we all come with a finite amount of energy. And that's why we go to sleep at the end of the day, because you can't do without a single night's sleep. That itself should tell you that you come with a finite amount of energy. Now let's imagine that I, that I let you put that energy, which you can't see, uh, in, a, in a duffel bag. Okay, so I give you a backpack and I tell you that here, you carry your energy around, you can feel it, you can touch it. And every time that you have to expend this energy, you must get energy back in return. So which means any association, any conversation, any book you read, any act that you do, uh, as long as you're not getting the energy back in exchange, then that was not a good way to expend your energy. And this is the this is the best way that I think, uh, you know, to, to go about in a world, whether it is male dominated, whether it is cutthroat, this is the best way to keep looking after your energy because you have to be very careful about where you're expending your energy. The other thing is planning. Now, if you know that you have chosen to be in an area of work, which is intense, then my question to you is, uh, you know, all of us exercise, we all know different forms of exercise today. So I'm just going to throw some terms here. We tend to do uh, HIIT, which is high intense interval training uh, versus a low intensity training. And let's say you were going to do a low intensity training for the day, which is like just going out for a walk. You wouldn't really prepare yourself for that. You just put on your shoes, wear something easy breezy and go out for a walk. But let's assume that you were going to go into the gym for a CrossFit session and you knew that it was going to be a very tough day. What will you do? You will have some almonds. You will have a banana. You will drink enough water. You will even carry water, which has got, uh, you know, those uh, step up and things like that. So you've got to plan yourself. This is not about whether the area is uh, cutthroat or not. The fact is you have chosen to do your, you have chosen to pursue a passion. You have chosen to pursue your career there. Look after yourself. True, true that. I completely agree. Uh, Dr. Rao. Yeah. Traditionally, they say women are weaker than men, though I truly don't believe that. I don't think in this day and age where we, uh, in which we live, it, it holds true anymore. I think it just depends on the individual. But traditionally, they said that women were weaker than men physically. Uh, and mentally, many times they did say that too. You uh, chose to be in a field where it was very important for you to be physically very strong and also mentally very strong. How did you make that journey? Because when you began uh, talking to me uh, this evening, you said you began as someone who was physically weak. Yeah. yeah? How did you make that journey to being uh, a body with uh, uh, such a fiery mind and such a fiery spirit? Yeah, so Gitika, what happened is it was a journey, uh, you know, trying to change who I was constitutionally. Uh, so I obviously started running. I, you know, uh, got into doing many uh, marathons, 15 kilometer marathons, 20 kilometer marathons. I did, uh, I got my black belt. I trained in combat arts. Okay. Uh, apart from that, I also did uh, scuba diving and became a paddy instructor. I did uh, mountaineering and, uh, you know, got a silver medal in rock climbing. 
so i did a course on survival on firefighting and various other things because uh, i realized that uh, if i had to train commandos i had to understand the terrain that they are uh, in usually so that means land water and uh, you know the air i did my uh, you know the wings that are wear here on my chest <clears throat> i'll tell you a story about that please i wanted uh, to you know do my jumps so uh, i went to this course with the navy it was an adventure course and uh, i uh, applied for that i went there and uh, you know i had this fear of heights i was really very scared of heights but uh, i went for the course and uh, i was quite scared to do any of the things but thankfully uh, the winds were bad it rained heavily and uh, the course just got stalled you know it it, it didn't really complete get completed so then i uh, you know applied to the air force and since i had trained the air force uh, commandos i wrote to the air chief and he said yes maybe you can do a job so i went to do a course with them and after a systematic course when i uh, you know when we went up into the air and i was standing at the edge of uh, the helicopter and my instructor looked at me and he said ma'am are you ready to jump and i said yes i am and i jumped and uh, you know there was an instant where there was a little bit of fear but after that the feeling was absolutely exhilarating because i was up there in the sky looking around it was such a different world you know and i could see what is happening down uh, it it was it was a very good feeling uh, it was also a feeling where i felt uh, you know i had taken charge of the fear that i had for so long so um, yeah so that is what it's been it's been a it's been an interesting journey but uh, very very satisfying be so many such moments you know days that you have i can't imagine how you did it i mean uh, really i mean to be physically and mentally so in tune with your maximum strength takes a lot from within a human's uh, uh, body and mind and uh, you and, you know uh, yeah you know gitika i think fear is yeah i think fear is uh, is something that we all feel for different things yeah, but i think fear is only meant towards survival uh, and and the person who learns to channelize the fear in the right direction and conquer the fear he's the one who really can do anything and everything in the world and we have so many people who are doing it because i think they are the ones who really know how to handle their fear Yes, absolutely, uh, Sri Devi. There are lots of women out there who want to work in fields that are traditionally male-dominated, and you're one who's done it, and you're an example and inspiration today. Uh, how do you mentally and physically prepare yourself uh, for a challenge like this? Tell me. Uh, let me dig a little deeper and ask you: What was it that was going through your mind that many years back when you said that? Okay, I'm going to do this because this is my passion, and I'm not going to take a step behind this because everybody says it's a male-dominated profession. Yes. What was that moment of grit, inspiration, strength? Tell me. So uh, it was not about the. It was not about one moment of inspiration. I think, like I said, when I started learning the ropes. and i realized that this is not something which is gender specific this is something which is process oriented and that you know if one can get it then anybody can get it uh so i wouldn't say it was one spark that happened to me i thought i think i kind of went into it gradually and i became convinced about it over a period of time okay, okay. you know kritika uh, you you were asking uh, uh, me as well as you were asking her about what happens uh, you know when men and women are doing the same kind of job and Uh, which is traditionally a male dominated area uh, if i can dramatize this a bit uh, there was a time when the bankers went to war and uh, no prices for guessing that was the demonetization time okay all of us thought uh, here we are doing it for the country and right please so. and thank you all thank you all <laughs> yes <laughs> i i accept it on behalf of all the bankers in the country <laughs> so uh you know at that point in time i think it was it is public knowledge we had no time to prepare okay we had no time to prepare and we were all doing long hours for at least 60 days continuously we had no saturdays and sundays we had absolutely no sense of work life balance we would go into work at uh, you know we would just get out of bed and get to work 
Uh, and in the night, I had no idea what time I came home. I used to come home by 12.30, 1.30, 2.30. And if, uh, you know, uh, uh, if for some reason for that day, the accounts hadn't reconciled, then you just had to sit there and ensure that you close accounts for the day. Now, that's when I actually saw the beauty of women. And I realized that there was not a single woman, there was not a single family of a woman who came up and said, she's sitting there and doing long hours. Whether it was a man or a woman, and you also have men as well as women manning the telecounters, they were all sitting there continuously, so many times skipping their meals and doing the job that they got to do. But here's, here's one more beautiful thing that, uh, you know, that we women are capable of doing together. And I've seen this very beautiful quality in women. I think that's, that's what actually uh, makes us more resilient. Um, or, or at least it's palpable that we are very resilient. And that is, uh, we tend to get into communities very quickly. We tend to, you know, kind of look for each other for support very quickly. So we had a very informal, uh, you know, exercise group that was going around at that point in time. I am a Pinkathon ambassador, incidentally, and I had a group going for Pinkathon at that time. So there were this, you know, 250 women or something like that who were in the group. And all of us were, uh, you know, going through this space which was very intense and uh, asking for a lot of energy from ourselves. So I don't know who started it, but someone said, hey, let's, let's just give alarms to each other. So we had somebody every hour, someone, someone or the other, giving us water alarms, saying, did you drink a glass of water? There was someone giving us movement alarms, saying, hey, get up and walk from the desk. There was someone saying, you know, if you've, who has not had their lunch? Can I come and sit up, sit there and give you a break? So this is the way that, that I think women are able to come together and women are able to add panache to whatever that they do. Wow. I'm going to uh, uh, ask you the next question. Uh, it's sort of in flow with what you've been talking about. Uh, you had a very intensive career as uh, a banker and then you've gone into um, a whole new career and you're maintaining the intensity of <laughs> your involvement, yeah. I've heard. You also nurtured a family alongside and a lovely, lovely family. Okay. So you have done well in your life in every sphere. How have you managed this balance? And you know, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you for generic, generic tips. No, because I believe that every woman's journey, when she sets out to achieve work-life balance is a unique journey. Okay. It's your, your journey and your learning journey. Any learning you'd like to share with everyone? Yeah, so, so this is how, this is what I've told myself, Gitika, that I, I ask myself, what's my constant and what's my variable? Okay, my constant and every time that I ask myself, and I do a lot of work, uh, you know, uh, with Heal Your Life, and I love the fact uh, that Dr. Seema Rao brought about on fear. I mean, I can, we can go on talking about it, but I won't digress there. I'm going to come back uh, to, to the family component of it. My constant is my family. I may spend 18 hours away at work, and, but those are all my variables. That could be because of my career, that could be because of my hobbies, that could be because I'm meeting friends. But at the end of the day, I know that I would love to come back and sleep in my bed. Okay. Um, I have never shifted that goal simply because it is me. And I understand that if somebody else has a constant, which is something else, and it is not family, well, great for you. But remain true to your constant. So here's a very uh, interesting episode that happened with me a few years back. Okay? Uh, we were a leadership team. I was part of a leadership team that was going to have a regional review, like, like any other quarter. Yeah. Now, what must have happened when I uh, look back is someone must have looked up uh, three days of holidays coming together because you obviously didn't want to skip work. Uh, you just wanted to make use of the holidays like we always do for leadership retreats. Um, and someone came up with three dates. Now it never occurred to any one of us. And I, and I know for a fact that this was not done willfully. It was for sheer oversight that it was the Navratri time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now you know how Navratri is very festive for some of us, but for some of us, there are also, um, you know, those small rituals and uh, small puja, whatever that you have to do at home. Now yeah. I have a, a mother-in-law who's, so supportive uh, about my career 
but she has just this one ask from me and that is during navratri time she prefers that i am at home because she calls a lot of ladies over and she likes it that i give the haldi kumku uh now i was at my wits end i really didn't know how to go up and this is where for the first time i realized that you know i am in a in a male dominated world because i didn't know how to go up to my boss and say that i i, I probably felt a little embarrassed i thought i was going to be judged uh, you know the the trappings that come with feelings like this but somehow i kept asking myself that who are you going to be loyal to to your constant or to your variable and the voice in my head said that i have to stand up for my constant because it is this constant that is keeping me going so somehow i gathered the energy i was very sheepish i went up to my boss and i told him is there any way you can move the dates around and by then uh, much damage was already done because people had to travel they had booked their tickets and people were already landing and uh, okay so so i thought i will tell him that you know i can excuse myself but that couldn't have happened because i was handling a very important portfolio and there was a half a day presentation around it and i also didn't want to miss on the other things because it would add value to me to to be around in the in the whole meet now to cut a long story short my boss relented uh, he wasn't too happy about it uh, not because i was asking for something silly but because you know the whole plan was breaking up uh um, and then i was able to be at home for the haldi kumkum but you know what was the beauty of the story the beauty of the story is a couple of male colleagues coming up to me and telling me hey thank you shri we didn't know what to tell our wives at home thank you for doing this <laughs> i want to so i want to why they didn't speak up yes so i i think um, i think we always got to ask ourselves you know what do you want to do end of the day who are well, you for yeah. <laughs> the fact that you've got to stand up for your support system because i know that i couldn't have pursued this lovely career if i didn't have that support system going for me at home and that one thing that your support system is asking you to do for them however small and silly that it may sound you know i think that's where you show respect for them yes and very nice that you've narrated this entire story with uh, with admitting that you were sheepish you were not sure of how you were react and all of that because it just shows how human you are and when you're uh, traveling a learning curve then these are feelings that all of us feel and once we have surmounted that learning curve the next time around probably if you have to ask for something like this you wouldn't feel as as, as sheepish you know yes yes i'm going to uh, go to dr rao dr rao you also have a child a family it's not easy how do you how do you do this balancing dance okay so first uh, since uh, shri devi already spoke about her mother in law that got me thinking about my mother in law uh, so i'll just speak about that first you know yes. the two the women the two women in my life whom i was first introduced to was one was obviously my mother who did a very uh, good balancing act with you know uh, she was a school teacher so she managed house uh, the home and work very well so you know you go up seeing this in fact i think countless women are so successfully handling both the you know cortex so uh, come back to uh, talking about my mother in law i uh, i got married very early and because my husband and i wanted to settle down early so i got married and like i mentioned that i was very interested in all those activities so while i would go out and for days together i wouldn't be there you know uh, go to different places finish with uh, learning the different activities and come back uh, my mother in law had uh, an ideology issue with that so uh, she would she wouldn't really uh, like what i was doing she wanted me to uh, you know uh, be at home take care of the family uh, you know have kids and take care of the in laws and all that which is uh, understandable for her i i i don't uh, say anything about that but for me it was something different uh, so one day she said uh, that this is it you know i think you are better leave the house go and live somewhere else and do what you want to do so i had a supportive partner so we left the house um it was a few months and then probably she pined for her son and uh, for me to and then we got back together and we started living together uh, but i think slowly uh, she began to understand uh, you know what i wanted uh, let me tell you that uh, you know she was a wonderful friend 
for the genuinity of your passion so yes yes so uh, over years she was with me in fact i lived more with my mother in law more number of years with my mother in law than with my mother and uh, you know towards the end when she got old she had cardiac disease she had heart disease and her heart was failing and there was at that time this uh, prime assignment that was uh, there which uh, deepak and i we had to go for that but uh, my mother in law was very ill so i told my husband though it was a very good assignment i said you go for it i'll be here and take care of her and uh, she was with me and uh, you know i spent uh, a lot of time talking to her being close to her taking care of her and she uh, she died in my on my lap and uh, you know uh, it's one thing that she said to me uh, which which really touched me and that was when you know it was the last few days she said if there ever is another life i would like you to be born as my daughter wow. so i think uh, yeah so i think that that stayed with me and um, so that was one relation which uh, you know i think i think women if they understand each other uh, it's 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 so beautiful because they they can see each other's uh, joys sorrows everything um talking about women and uh, their children handling their kids i would like to say that uh, as a mother it's very important to understand that you need to bridge the generation gap between you and your child because you are in a different generation and your child is in a different generation they want to have fun they want to you know spend money or have fun you know not necessarily study they want their career options are different so you need to understand that and not really force your opinions on them uh, you need to guide them uh, at the same time you know or not to dominate their decisions and uh, i think when that happens uh, you know uh, you can be your child's best friend and uh, that is your child should be comfortable telling you everything that there is so uh, so that's what uh, it is <laughs> uh shri devi yes i have heard you can correct me i have heard that in the corporate world when you have a baby and you back after a pregnancy that you have to start from scratch so i was wondering why this question wasn't coming you know this is this is something that, that gets asked to me in every forum so let, last the, let, me, add uh, let me add to that yeah. like does this to the new fathers too the new fathers too yes so um, i'm so glad you asked that ditika thank you for adding that bit so here's the thing i i disagree with that sentiment okay i personally disagree i know why you are asking me that question yes it is not always fair to everybody but it is for women to bring their a game on now you must understand uh, or we must all understand that when you are taking a maternity break it is because the woman's role in that in that phase um had to be 100% she had to be 100% involved in that phase of her life you know that young baby needed the care of a mother uh now your role in the organization at that point in time could be 1 in 100% and the organization moves on right i for example when i had my first daughter uh, which was 20 years back i took a one year break because i panicked i didn't know how i was going to handle it i just left my job and i wanted to look after the baby when i had my second daughter which was 8 years later i had my act together i sought help from my parents uh, in fact uh, you know my mother and father moved in at that point in time to support me and i still remember my daughter was born on the 10th of august i was going to work until the 9th of august and i joined exactly 91 days after hale and hearty and fit enough to join the job so here's the thing my mother went to work uh, my mother's a school teacher she went to work uh, after after i was all of 13 years of age after i had convinced her enough that i can look up to myself and my dad cooks any day much better than her that's a different story but uh, my grandmother yeah i should talk about her my grandmother served uh, in the indian army during the second world war she was a staff sergeant and she served and then she quit to go back and look after her family so it's about where you want to give your 100% and you must understand that when you have gone on your maternity break you have not been contributing to the career at that point in time 
But when you come back, you can start off from where you left it. And today there are many organizations. Things have improved a lot. There are many organizations like I know of. Uh, uh, I know of this uh, place called Avatar Career Creator Career Creators in Chennai, where they do a where they do a wonderful job of getting women uh, back to the corporate stream. Um, I work very closely. In fact, I'm on the mentor lab of uh, of a group called the Star in Me, where we are working with the women who want to have a second shot in their career. But yes, Geetika, having said that, I know where your question is coming from. And I have only this to say: fail seven times, stand up eight. Absolutely. Cheers to that. We have a few more minutes when I can ask you both uh, questions. So, quick responses from you, if you uh, sort of uh, can go along with that. And then I want to open it up for the audience uh, questions that have come in. Uh, me. Um, behind every man is a successful woman. Behind every successful woman. Is there a man? Any instances from your uh, lives and careers, both of you, where you yeah. wish that you know your the man in your family or the man at your work uh, or a complete stranger has has helped you journey ahead? Yeah, surely there has been. Uh, my husband has been uh, there to support me. I like to say, beside every successful man, there's a woman, and beside every successful woman, there's a man. So uh, I still remember, you know, when I first met him. Um, this was uh, when he was uh, 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 doing his medicine, uh, uh, Dr. Male. I met him and uh, sparks flew and then we uh, began to date each other. <laughs> okay. And uh, one day we were walking by the beach by job party and we were sitting there watching the waves. And I casually asked him, I said, what is your attitude to winning, to victory? And uh, he looked at me, he thought for a moment and then he said, uh, the question is not whether. The question is how. And you know, Gitika, that stayed with me forever because it meant that it's not whether you're going to win or not, but it's how you're going to win. Incidentally, my husband is Andre Major Deepak Rao. He's one of the six Indians to receive the president rank honor. And he received this honor uh, with uh, MS Tony, the cricketer, and Abhina Bindra, the Olympic shooter. So um, I think. Uh, that, that attitude which, uh, you know, uh, I learned, okay. So I learned whenever I hit an obstacle, uh, it's not whether I'm going to stop there and give up, but it, there has to be, I have to move around the obstacle or over the obstacle, but I need to reach my goal, never this. So uh, I think, uh, you know, I think in a relationship, okay, man-woman relationship, uh, you know, when they're husband and wife or when they're, when they're together, um, I think each of them should complement each other in the sense that, you know, they are like two halves of a circle. Uh, both should help each other. They should help each other reach their own uh, maximum potential, their own goals. Uh, I always say it's like, you know, instead of drinking from the same cup of tea, you are drinking from your cup of tea and I'm drinking from my cup of tea and they are still enjoying the moment together. So that's what I feel uh, is ideal when it comes to men. Uh, you know, everywhere I think men should uh, help their women out and women should help them. And it's it's a win-win situation then for both. Absolutely. Sri Devi, you? Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I know we're running out of time. So there was this point in my career, I think about, uh, I was into 10 years of my job and I said I wanted to reskill and upskill and I wanted to go back to school. So I had an MBA, but then... I had this urge to go back and do an executive program. And that is, in fact, how I even landed in IIM Kuripur. So I applied for it. It was not a very easy decision for us to take. We didn't have too much savings. I had to actually take a loan to go back to school. Um, like I said, very supportive husband who said that if, in case that's what you want, please go back and do it. But, um, you know, when I was packing my bags and booking my tickets, my father called up and said, I'll come with you uh, when I had to go to campus. I'm somebody who has traveled my, all through my life from very early uh, stages. So I was a little surprised. I said, why do you want to come? And then I thought, because it is Kerala and we are Malayalis, I thought, you know, maybe he wants to come. So I had to go to my mama's house, my mother's eldest brother's house, to, you know, to kind of uh, hop stop and then go into campus. So we go there and then both my uncle and my father, they insist that they're going to come to drop me off at the campus. Now, by now, I was begin, beginning to get a little embarrassed about their behavior. But then, you know, uh, 
slightly older. They didn't want to offend anybody. I said, <laughs> you know, just enjoy it. <laughs> so, you know, they insisted on taking me and everything. So then we went and the campus has got a huge flight of stairs, you know. So here these two men, and they walk up the flight of stairs and each of them is uh, standing up to uh, to uh, get a breath for themselves and i do the registration formalities and then i'm looking at them saying okay bye and they're not going <laughs> and then i'm like i i have to go to class and they are like okay and then i started walking into the class you know i started walking into the classroom with everyone looking at me um and at some point i had to turn back and tell them in so many words thank you bye but you know ritika <laughs> um, it is me yeah. i think about those two 70 year old men standing up for their daughter who was a grown woman all of 35 years just to encourage her itch of wanting to go back to school stayed with me you know and and this is something my husband and i would tell my daughters our daughters all the time that no matter where you are in life what you do no matter where we are and how we are we got your back and you know, have you dropped them back to a college or something uh, sorry have you come to that stage where you have dropped them to a college or something you know i don't but then uh, all that i want to tell them is i got your back but i know that there is a yeah they wouldn't allow you to do so okay yeah. i'm going to go into some uh, some fun questions here and then i have loads of questions that have come to me which i want to ask at least a few uh, so both of you go at it uh, whenever you get the uh, spark of an answer uh, just complete these sentences for me okay the new normal is the mask bartan jhadu pocha for both genders in <laughs> absolutely yeah there is uh, a future superpower yeah. see devi you i said india is beautiful beautiful okay gender equality is do or do hota hai panch okay uh, gender equality sorry i'm going to give you a serious answer yet to become a reality okay uh, banking is uh, digital Trading commandos is interesting. My life. <laughs> okay. Uh, rapid fire coming your way. Just make your choices. Money or appreciation? Appreciation. Please appreciate me for the fact that I love money. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. Just, just, I'm happy that you're being honest, and I kind of go with you with the same answer. Okay. Money or appreciation done. Vada pav or noodles? Vada pav. Vada pav. Make okay. it. <laughs> events physical or events virtual physical virtual okay uh films or web series films web series <laughs> mitali raj or virat kohli i'd say virat raj pakash <laughs> bahut <laughs> raj so maybe you Okay, I'm trying not to answer because I don't understand cricket. So I would typically walk to the next room, put on ding chak Bollywood music, and dance to it. Okay, ask me, Virat Raj or Mitali, uh, Virat Kohli or Mitali Raj. Yeah, what's your answer? Okay, uh, ask me. <laughs> ask me. My Mitali Raj or Virat Kohli? There is Virat Kohli. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the year or the year twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty because I believe in living in the present. Okay. Twenty because I'm a life coach and I tell people to live in the present. <laughs> okay. Good. I'm so twenty twenty one. And with that, I'm going to take the audience questions coming your way. Here we go. We have a question for you, uh, Sri Devi, uh, from yes. uh, Sival Ghosh from West Bengal. First okay. First of all, thank you for watching, and uh, we're delighted that you could join us. Uh, he's asking. How to be mentally and physically fit to cope with the target pressure? Okay, so to become physically fit, you have to become mentally fit. Saibal Ghosh, thank you for asking me that question. And the second is, uh, if you can break your target down, not into what you have to deliver, but into why you have to deliver. So if you can tell yourself that you have a big picture, you want to come up in your career, and for you to come up in your career. these are the stages that you have to cross 
then the targets uh, would actually disappear and a path would appear before you. Okay. The next question is by Sudipta Ghosh from Sikkim. Ah, such a beautiful place. And thank you for joining us and uh, staying with us till the very end. This is for Dr. Seema. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Rao, how can we make our fear our positive energy? Is it possible? Yeah, you know, the thing is that, like I mentioned, that fear is meant for survival. So it's actually meant to help you survive. And the knowledge of this should help you because you need to channelize your fear, not to put you down, to subdue you, but you need to channelize it to overcome whatever it is that you're getting scared of. So let fear be your friend, let it be there, but go ahead and do what you have to do. Having that fear there to just caution you at the right time. Okay. Pritika, can I just answer that question uh, with, with one thing that I want? Um, what did you say the name is? Mr. Ghosh, I heard that. Sudipta Ghosh. Sudipta Ghosh. So, Sudipta, please Google up, uh, in addition to what Dr. Seema has so beautifully explained, please Google up on the internet, uh, Vitality Modes and Attitude Scale. Just Google this, you will get an image. And that image will tell you that when you're operating from the zone of fear, you know, how low is your vibration? And when you start operating from the zone of uh, appreciation and self-love, how higher your vibration goes and, and then things become very easy for you to achieve. Sai jawab is jawab ko am lock ye karege. Pooja Reddy. <laughs> Pooja Reddy from Tamil Nadu. You're both in very high stress jobs. And of course, this is a very high stress time for Indians all over and for everyone across the globe, actually. How do you remind yourself to make time to be happy? Make time? Uta. Thank so you for talking me. about the pandemic and how we're handling our time right now. Uh, she's saying it's a high stress uh, time for everybody all over, especially Indians. So during this time, how are you reminding yourself to keep, you know, it's important to be happy? Or okay. simply, how do you keep happy? Yeah, so the first thing that I would like to say is that, uh, you know, if you're at home, then you need to uh, occupy your time, you know, probably uh, get uh, fitter, you know, uh, lose weight if you uh, need to uh, do that. And you need to spend uh, some quality time with uh, your family at home, uh, bond with them. Uh, if you're working from home, then uh, you need to demarcate time for work hours as well as for time with your family. So demarcate those hours and uh, when it's time to spend, uh, you know, with your family, uh, don't sit looking at your emails and your uh, messages, etc. And make the best of this time because this is time when you have for yourself. So just go ahead and do what you want to do. Uh, so, Shudhika, I would tell her that A, first of all, tell yourself that you deserve to be happy. You, you are okay telling yourself that you need to be happy. And women, uh, again, this is a little cliched, but, but this is very true, that we women think that, you know, getting into our, our, our own space to make ourselves happy is selfishness. It is not selfishness. Uh, you know, there is another word for it today called selffulness. And only if you are happy and full, can you then go back and cater to the needs of your family or your work or even yourself? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, that, that's precisely, you know, that's what I would like to second that uh, one is happy when he is happy with himself uh, to start with. So if you're happy with the way you are doing things, with the way you look, with the way you are, then I think that is, that's right, you know, inside you. So, yeah. That's, that's well, well, uh, uh, Sri Devi and you both spoke about how when you're at home, you know, you must eat well and try and lose weight. So I am not happy with myself. I'm just overeating. <laughs> and instead of losing weight, I'm adding on all the weight. So Pooja ready from Tamil Nadu. I hope you got your uh, answer there. Uh, so I hope you're doing well. Abhishek Gopal from Haryana is asking, uh, from being a commando trainer, Dr. Seema Rao, you've displayed creativity um, by directing, writing, editing her movie titled uh, Hathapai, Hathapai which went on to win the prestigious uh, Dada Sahib Falke Film Festival Jury Award for 2015. How was your experience on the other side of the camera? <laughs> okay. Um, well, there's uh, it was an interesting journey. No, because... no, one, second, one second. There's a dialogue in that film, uh, in, in that iconic role that Karina Kapoor uh, played. Uh, Pooh, remember? Yeah. 
या वे शी लुक्स इन द मेरा एंड सेज नॉट फेयर तुम इतनी खूबसूरत कैसे हो सकती हो आई एम टेलिंग यू नॉट फेयर आप इतनी टैलेंटेड कैसे हो सकती है नहीं नहीं No, 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 Gidika. I think, uh, I think a lot of women are talented. Some are known, some are not known, and it's just about you know. Uh, I mean, there's so many out there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, there's nothing. There's no big deal. I'll tell you why and how I live there. You know, it's an interesting story again that uh, you know uh, I was approached by uh, a filmmaker to uh, make a movie on Bruce Lee. we sat down together we spoke and then uh, we kind of uh, we had our own conditions but we didn't get along then i thought why not make one myself now that was a weird idea because i didn't know anything about film making but then uh, i just got to you know got some books and got a few people a handful of people and i decided chalo dekhte hain and i made the movie which is a movie on mixed martial art and uh, jeet kundu and i had some many people act in it i sang in the movie as well and uh, wow. i said my god you got a good voice and what happened all these years <laughs> i never knew <laughs> so i said yeah there's a lot more things about me that you don't know so well the movie uh, was made and um, uh, sent it to the dada saheb palke film festival to aise hi dekhte hain kya hota hai and it got the jury appreciation certificate and it's a woman based movie a female oriented movie on how a woman uh, you know restores the dignity that she has lost so it was about that because uh, like i said that i'm very passionate about uh, the concept of women empowerment so i decided to have this side to the movie okay one last question because we've almost run out of time ashwini kamath from goa What is your advice to young women who hope to one day be like you? Um, I would say that first and foremost, uh, understand that you have a lot of capabilities within you. Uh, there is no difference between man and woman. A woman is as capable as a man is. Secondly, I would say that you know it's the years of conditioning uh, which makes men probably wonder whether a woman can. do well in a male dominated uh, field it's not really their fault it's just the conditioning uh, and it's been happening since years so now everything is changing uh, thirdly i think uh, you know you keep your uh, upgrade your skills don't be afraid to voice your opinions loud because of fear of uh, you know being uh, uh, not uh, heard and apart from that uh, i think uh, it's better it's always good to be a good human being rather than just be good at work so at your workplace uh, you know respect your boss do your work uh, you know help your subordinates and also be very good have very good interpersonal relations with your colleagues because the essence is uh, you know first of being a good human being and everything else comes later i would also say that uh, as women um, if you are criticized or if uh, you are in an argument do not feel uh, ostracized don't feel uh, you know uh, victimized but instead uh, speak about what you want assert your opinion um, and you will be heard and uh, having said this i think uh, you know also yeah so don't don't have uh, if you're in an argument don't get angry don't get sentimental don't cry but very calmly uh, you know uh, speak what you have to speak uh, treat your male counterparts as your equals nobody is going to stop you from going up the ladder of success surely not men uh, and for men i would like to say that uh, you know they need to understand that women have their own attributes which a man does not have so the attributes a man has a woman doesn't the attributes a woman has the man doesn't and when both get together and understand this fact i think they can work uh, and, and make magic together and success is is not far so these were also wrapping lines uh, from you dr dog they just fit beautifully if i had to uh, ask you to wrap again this would be what you would say uh sri devi any last thoughts that you like so uh, my last thoughts to ashwati would be ashwati you are already on the path um and i would like to echo uh, the the whole sentiment of this webinar and that is open minds have an open mind ashwati and there is a very beautiful line that uh, rumi had once said did you not know that it is your light that lights up the world all the best to you you will do well ah uh, i think right. perfect evening talking to both of you normally when i go to work it feels like a job but today it's just uh, it's felt like uh, a, a learning uh, in life thank you both for joining us uh, on this conversation 
and uh, I'd like to thank all our esteemed patrons for joining us for this uh, conversation. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I hope you have a very, very happy day ahead and have a great year. What's left of this extremely interesting year, I'd like to say. So this was a conversation that I had with uh, two women, but more importantly, with two awesome humans. And uh, I'd like to say that men and women both were two sides of the coin. And uh, the truth is ki hum saath saath hai. So I'd leave you with those little thoughts there. Stay happy, stay safe, and stay strong. Thank you both once again. And thank you everybody for watching. Namaskar and Jai Thank you.